Hello and welcome to the Healthy Hectares Project, Tackling Invasive Weeds and Animals at the Public-Private Interface, Interface Webinar. Um, so I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the different lands on which we meet tonight and um, pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. So my name's Gervais Gaunt. I'm with the Wodonga Urban Land Care Network. I'm a project officer with the Healthy Hectares Project. Um, and this project is supported by the federal government and under the National Land Care Program. So one of the out outcomes of the Healthy Hectares Project is to increase the knowledge and the skills of smaller lifestyle property owners by offering workshops and webinars covering farm planning, biodiversity, uh, pastures, livestock, soil and water, and um, pests, animals, and plants and animals, which is the basis of tonight's webinar. So the first presentation, we'll have Mel. Um, Mel will be talking for around 20 minutes, um, then followed by Andrew. And um, following that, we will actually, we'll take questions. So after Mel's presentation, we'll take some questions and, um, and then after Andrew's as well. But during um, Mel's presentation, we encourage you to join the um, chat and write your questions in the chat. And so we'll be addressing those questions at the end of each presentation, along with any other um, questions, verbal questions that you might like to have. So, um, so, um, so I'll hand it over to um, Mel. Um, so Mel Burleson, um, who is the Good Neighbour Project Officer with DECA, and she's based in Bensdale. Um, Mel will present on the Good Neighbour Project a program com which complements your weed and pest control efforts to prevent the spread of invasive species, protect your property and sustain your natural environmental assets. So Mel, thank you. I'll, I'll hand it over to you and I'm just going to turn my video and, and mute myself while you're doing your presentation. Thanks Gervais. Um, hi all. So as Gervais said, I'm Mel Burleson. Uh, Good Neighbour Project Officer um, for the Department of Energy, Environment and Climate Action, and I am based in Bensdale. However, I do have a statewide role. So um, what I'll do is put this presentation on for you all and we'll go through this. Let me just do this. So can everyone see the presentation? Hopefully you can. Um, so this presentation is just regarding the Good Neighbour Program. So some of you may have heard it uh, of it. Historically in the Northeast region, um, it's had a lot of support. And so what used to happen was we had um, a regional coordinator for the Good Neighbour Program in every single region um, within, the, within the DECA estate. That's actually changed over the last two years. And currently it's myself um, looking after the whole of the state and just working with those regional work centers to deliver this program. So what is the Good Neighbor Program? So the premise of the Good Neighbor Program is really around working together on that public private interface to control uh, invasive species. Um, so we do recognise that weeds just don't have boundaries. So some of the issues and problems that you have on your side of the fence, we also have on our side of the fence. And this program is actually there to ensure that we're meeting our responsibilities and delivering complementary action um, to what the landholders and the community are doing and to address any concerns or issues that um, landholders may have. So. It is a coordinated and prioritised sort of project um, program. Now there's several marking criteria and scoring that we do go through to prioritise what projects are actually funded and what isn't. So about this program, um, we have, it's actually delivered across both Parks Victoria and um, the DECA estate. So we do have allocations of money to give both um, Parks Victoria and DECA to meet their responsibilities with compliance species and handle those complaints and concerns on that public-private interface. Um, so this year alone, we had over 200 projects that were funded under the Good Neighbour funding stream, things like gorse, rabbit, prickly pear, serrated tussock, and uh, many other species. 
So really the program objectives are to control invasive species, including new and emerging infestations along the public-private interface that align with the invasive plants and animal policy framework. So that's an Agriculture Victoria document for those that haven't you seen it, haven't seen it, and it actually tells us what our priority species are based on the threat, um, the location, and each catchment region has different rankings for their weeds. So we use that and apply that to this process. So we're aligning it with that and we're ensuring that we're sort of targeting those weeds that we really need to target. Um, one of the other reasons we're delivering this project is to actually strengthen partnerships with local landholders and prioritise invasive species work along the boundary. To support community driven projects and compliance programs on adjoining land and to engage with other natural resource management agencies to ensure that there's an integrated approach. So quite a few of our projects that are delivered um, through Good Neighbour Program are being run in response to those complaints and community concerns, but they're also being done alongside agencies such as Shire Councils, Catchment Management Authorities, Parks Victoria um, and community groups. So overall, um, I think we had about 40 or 50 different sort of agencies represent um, delivery within Good Neighbour this year. So it is delivered by Parks Victoria and DECA staff, but we had complementary action by about 40 to 50 different agencies this year. Um, so the main premise of the project is actually, program I should say, is to support landholders. So um, as I said, this program has been around for 20 plus years. So some of you may have been involved with this in some way or shape or form, but so what it is, um, is just us really doing what we should be doing on our side of the fence. And the way we actually um, do that is by complaints, concerns and community inquiries that have done to our regional staff, through our call centre, um, through emails we get, through conversations you have out with um, DECA and Parks Victoria staff. That's how these projects are kind of formulated and, and get put up for um, submission. So the way this project is kind of run is there's myself who's a regional coordinator. So I'm there to support the program at, a, at that higher level to sort of coordinate um, projects and assessments to give training to regional staff on, on different weed projects and um, just provide assistance. Now there is an actual person within Parks Victoria as well that has the same role as myself. So you've got, you've actually got two within the Hume region that look after it, but there's one primarily in the Wodonga area um, that looks after the Good Neighbour projects for Parks Victoria as sort of a coordinator. But each region within PV have their own individual coordinator overseeing it. Um, and then for DECA, I'm the person that oversees the, the DECA projects and the coordination of, of the program. So we do have a technical assessment panel. So projects are actually um, go through a technical assessment panel process. So once projects are actually put into um, a program that we have, projects are scored based on a set criteria. And that criteria is pretty much, what are the neighbours doing? What complaints have you had? What's the species that you're trying to target? And are we gonna have success or what are we gonna achieve? Um, so we actually go through and we score like each of those projects and they get funded based on, on the score that comes out from all of those. So the technical assessment panel that actually score the project, we've got it. So um, it's a non-biased approach. So there's one representation, which is myself from DECA for all projects across the state. There's also representation from Parks Victoria and that's the coordinator from Parks Victoria. Shire councils, where we have contacts within the Shire councils already, or we, we they're willing to come. We actually have Shire Councils there for support to help assist with our scoring and prioritising. We also have catchment management authorities. So for each region, we get however many catchment management authorities may be on board. So for Gippsland, we've got two catchment management authorities. For North East, I think there's two or three um, that we get to come to our technical assessment panel to help assess projects. Um, we also have Agriculture Victoria representation, so that's fantastic because they can tell us whether they're compliance projects, give us some more information about the species that we're proposing to treat, um, and they can also inform us whether or not they're doing complementary works as well. 
traditional owners, we're getting traditional owners involved. Um, we've already, that's a new thing we've got, but we're starting those conversations with traditional owners and we're actually inviting them to come along to give some input as to the projects that are being proposed as well. Landcare groups, generally what we do is we have a landcare facilitator or um, a regional coordinator for the whole of the region. Um, and sometimes that's just done through catchment management representation, but they come along as well to score these projects. So the premise of having everyone there is everyone can then give us some input. Um, they know the local area, the local patch, the local issues. So they can turn around then and tell us, yep, we're having the same problems. We're doing complimentary work. Or we've had complaints from those neighbours too. And it gives us a really, really good picture of what's happening because a lot of the time those outside of just so just for DECA, for example, those outside of that, you might not have those connections with those other agencies and there's not that strong a collaboration, but this is where the technical assessment panel really comes to life and provides input and sort of says, well, yeah, we're having the same issues and we can kind of put people together. So hopefully moving forward that they can collaborate a little bit better um, and address all those community concerns and issues. So, we have the landholders and community groups and that's you guys and you might be wondering how you guys fit into all of this. So um, you guys are the ones that complain, support, let us know what's happening out there. So the way you can be involved in the program is actually by making contact with either your Parks Victoria or your DECA staff members or myself. I'm happy to pass on to the relevant person if you're unsure. If you've got any community concerns, um, or issues regarding that public-private interface. So what I mean by the public-private interface is the boundary, pretty much from where private stops and the public land starts. So you need to make sure that um, if you've got a concern or complaint that you're letting us know what the species is, what you want done about it, what you're actually doing about it. So if you've got an issue and you can say, hey, I'm working on my side of the fence, I've got all this blackberry here, but the blackberries just keep coming back because you're not doing your side of the fence. We need to know about that. And that can be done through a complaint process that we've got or just a letter, an email, excuse me, um, or something like that, just to show us what the issue is on your side of the fence. So, Although the community can't actually deliver the project themselves, they're the ones that really makes these projects happen. So they're the ones that tells us what the concerns are. They're the ones that tells us what the problems are. And through our local local staff, um, we develop those projects and, and get those projects up and running. So one of the main things though is when we're scoring these projects, we look for what the community is actually doing. So we look at are the, is there land care groups working in the area? Is it a priority for the land care groups? Are the community got together? Is there three or four landholders that have got the same issue? They're all working on it together. Um, we're not gonna go in and kind of do works on areas where you've made a complaint or someone's made a complaint and they go, okay, well, this is here. Um, what are you gonna do about it? If you guys aren't actually showing us that you're working to address the issue yourself on your side of the fence. So there's no point us going investing, just say if we've got a, um, a boundary that's full of something like English broom, if it's all over the other side of the fence, it just doesn't make sense for us to go and do that. So those projects are pretty much a low priority. Um, so the way our projects are actually delivered um, is with local community. So with the support of local community or joining landholders, the project managers, we have got regional project managers from the department and from P um, Parks Victoria. So that's mainly their ranges that deliver these projects. They're the ones that put the ideas forward. They're the ones that bring them to us. And then from there, what we do, as I said, we assess them all and then they go back and deliver. So they're the ones that will be engaging with landholders, community groups, other agency partners. Um, just so we can make sure that there's that ownership at that local level. So that's why project delivery comes from that regional level and not from someone like myself who sits in Bansdale and I'm delivering projects in Wodonga. So there are key contacts within your region that do deliver these projects. And so the Northeast region themselves, there's four or five different um, project managers within, within DECA alone that deliver good neighbour projects over there. So this is just a bit of an overview of some of the projects that were delivered last financial year. Um, we're about to go through the process. So projects close in 
two weeks, three weeks, project applications for the next financial year. Um, what happens with these projects is projects are eligible for funding for three years. So as I said, it's to address that community concern, problem, and see if we can get on top of those. So this year, as you can see um, up here, and I don't know if I do this, it'll work. So you've got Wodonga. Um, it's primarily Blackberry works that are happening within your region. You've got some gorse around Wangaratta Wodonga projects um, there, and you've got quite a few here that are broom, sort of, that's the Midder Valley. Um, most of those projects are Midder Valley projects there for the broom. But otherwise, the main species that are being target are your briar rose, your gorse, and your blackberry. As you can see on this one, there's also a little bit of St. John's wort that's been done under Good Neighbour, um, a couple of willow projects and a little bit of pine. So they're the kind of projects, as you can see, probably if I go back to the last slide, it is a statewide project. And so with this, it's really good to keep in mind. So you've got a Blackberry Action Task Force within um, Northeast, and that's a priority for them. As you can see, there's not as many Blackberry issues in, over the other side of the state, um, even in Gippsland. So there's complementary action and support from groups such as the, the Blackberry Task Force in the Northeast, um, who've been able to assist with complaints and compliance and getting stuff done on the ground. So that makes a really, really good project. And that's why there's so much Blackberry work happening in the Northeast, because you've got supports from group like the Blackberry Action Task Force and the Landcare Group that are actually delivering work, complementary works alongside this. So the Good Neighbour project, the program, sorry, um, I apologise for that. I keep calling it project instead of program. Um, actually also delivers invasive animal projects as well. So as you can see here, out of the 144 projects that got funded last year, most of it was Blackberry Works, Gorse and Broom. And they're the three that are uh, issues in the Northeast. So this is an overall sort of picture for the whole of the state. And they're the three, the top three of the three that you guys are facing over in the Northeast. You can deliver pest animal projects as part of this. So there are complementary programs already. So there's a deer, a peri-urban deer program. So we don't fund deer within this. We've also got a statewide, uh, sorry, a, a landscape scale um, feral pig program that's been delivered through the Northeast and uh, East Gippsland. So we don't kind of fund pig projects for this anymore. We have historically, um, but moving forward, I think it's probably fox, rabbit and cat projects that will be delivered under this and deer and pig will look at funding those elsewhere out of this. But if you've got community concerns, issues, complaints regarding those, we're still happy to take those on board and then funnel those out to the right people. So last year, um, there were 22 fox projects, three pig, one cat and 22 rabbit. So, but if we go back to the thing here in the Northeast, there weren't any actual, really, there was a Fox project up here. That was all that was delivered within Northeast last year. So for projects to be eligible, I kind of touched on this before, they have to prioritise partnerships with adjoining landholders, communities and other agencies. And this is done through complaints and talking to landholders and community groups about what they're doing and what they're delivering on the ground. Without that component met, projects generally don't get funded. So we actually need to know what's been delivered, who's delivering it and what you're doing to address the problem before we step in. Um, target areas in proximity to the boundary between the public and private interface. So we do know with animals that animals are a little bit more transient. So we're happy for it to extend a bit further out than the interface. So by interface, we kind of um, look at different species too, and just say you've got an infestation of English broom that you're treating on a boundary property, but there's one or two plants further into the into our public land, we will also target those as well, just to ensure that they don't sort of spread over the next few years and come back in. Activities have to occur on DECA or parks managed land. So we can't, unfortunately, we can't do any works on public land, oh, sorry, private land. Um, but they have to be on DECA or Parks Victoria managed land. So the aim of this is to protect agriculture, environmental, cultural and any other values on private land. So that's done through a mechanism where we look at um, just different values that each, each block of land has got. So 
This is one way you guys can all get um, involved. If you've got a community issue, community concern, a need, if you want to put a project, um, if you've got, uh, if you want to, got some ideas about where you think we should be working or where we need to work at a local level, I'm happy to provide this to you guys or your regional staff, most of your regional staff who are involved within Good Neighbour, I can put you in contact with those. This is one of the ways that we actually record um, complaints, concerns and issues. So all it is, um, and it goes to our technical assessment panel so they can see what, what, the, what the problem is and, and what we need to do about it. So um, you don't actually have to be a landholder to do this. You can just be a con con concerned citizen, an interest group. Um, you can be a landholder. You're just someone with a general interest in the parcel of land and the weed issue. So. Um, to, to kind of sum this up, and it doesn't have to be a lengthy document if you fill this in to raise your issues, just the invasive species that needs addressing. So just say it was gorse or blackberry or, or whatever. Um, what, what is it and why is it an issue? Where is it located? So regarding that, it's just what public land block. Some landholders actually give us their address and we can look it up from there and say, okay, well, there's this parcel of land adjacent to that. So a location, a name, and if you know the public land, fantastic. Otherwise you can provide your address. Are you doing any complimentary works that support this project? So that's really, really important. So if you say no, and you're, as I said, saying to us, you've got an issue on your side of the fence, but you're not addressing it, projects don't really get up if it's like that. But if you're saying, yep, I've got these blackberries, my neighbor's got these blackberries, we're doing this, we want you to come and do yours. That's where this project will get up any other information, if there's anything you think that's really important. So if you know that there's interest groups, if you know there's land care working there, um, even if you know that there's a shire or a CMA or something, that's where you kind of put that information so we can get a better picture about, okay, there's all these other agencies and people working there, but you're not doing what you should be doing. Now, if you come to us and or gave it to your local staff, um, DECA staff member or PV staff member, we'd have to take this really seriously and actually put this forward and consider delivering a project on that on that land. Um, without complaint, we can't, projects don't get up, unfortunately. And there's so many weed problems right throughout the landscape. We're only kind of addressing those that meet the criteria at this particular point in time. We just don't have enough funding to go through and target all the weeds that we want to. So that's why weeds are prioritised based on that risk framework and their invasiveness. Um, if you've got any photos or any other information you wanted to provide, you're more than welcome to share it. So sometimes a photo tells a really good story and we can actually see, yep, yeah, this, you might write something on there and we see a photo and we go, okay, well, that is a problem. There's a fence line there. That's definitely, so I can't encourage people enough if there is issues or if there's problems that you actually provide us with photos because they do tell a really, really good story. So some examples of the current Good Neighbour projects that we're delivering. Um, so serrated tussock in the Bungle State Forest. So that's got a compliance program. So um, Agriculture Victoria are actually delivering compliance on this. And these works are complementary works, working so with both landholders, the, the serrated tussock task force and um, Agriculture Victoria. They're trying to sort of slow the efforts of um, serrated tussock down. The Dedic River, so that's been an absolutely fantastic project. So that's in East Gippsland. So that's re received support from farmers, landholders, East Gippsland, CMA, um, and they're making sure that the weeds aren't traveling down into the Snowy River. So this has been a really great one. So we've had um, Mooji Aboriginal Council being delivered this one for us. We've had landholders doing complimentary works. So we've had local land care groups doing plantings and community days up there. The CMA have gone through and done willow passes to ensure that they're actually targeting some of the species that we're not targeting. So they weren't a priority species for this program for us, but they're doing complementary works. So that's been a really good example and a great um, show of how good neighbours should be working that project. So cactus species around Rushworth is another one we've got. So as you can see there, there's a bit of a fence line right here. Um, there's also another one down here. So this is the actual parcel of land that belongs to Deca on this estate here. And what we're trying to do is stop it from coming out into both that private areas adjacent. So it's currently being controlled using biocontrols, mechanical removal and um, targeted herbicide. So you can see the neighbour on this side of the fence. You can actually see in here, they're definitely treating and targeting the stuff on their side of the fence and they're stopping 
their stuff from spreading back into our public land. So we need to make sure that we're treating the stuff on the public land to make sure it doesn't spread back into the private. Uh, fox baiting along the big desert state forest. So this is a really this has been a really successful one. So as you can see on this slide here, 63 different bait stations have been put on that public private interface just to ensure that um, foxes aren't traveling in during lambing season there. So baitings occurred um, with local landholders as well. So they've been supported really well for the land care group. They're doing complementary baiting on their side of the fence. So this has been a combination of fumigation, ripping dens, shooting and guarding animals there. So generally that's done twice a year, I think we do that. Um, the main season is just prior to lambing season where we go in and actually deliver these works. But there's big support for this project up there in the Loddon Mallee um, based on historic events that have happened. This has really, really slowed down those numbers of foxes and the predation and helped people support their livestock um, on that farming land. So some of you may have seen one of these around, um, hopefully you have. So if you come across one of these out in any of your state forests, national parks or public land, this is just showing that it actually is a good neighbour project site. So we put these up to promote the fact that we are being a good neighbour, we are treating the weeds on our land and if you've got any concerns or problems, you can call up that number there and let us know that you want to talk about the good neighbour program. Um, it is really good too. We've, we've found from this, people have actually rung us up and said, hey, I'm doing this next door. Um, how do we get involved? So it's been a really good tool for us to actually promote programs as well as promote collaboration between different agencies and different people. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview. Um, so the main thing is this program is about delivering that public private interface work where you've got complaints, concerns and issues. And if you've got any concerns, I'm happy for you to make contact with me um, or you can go in and visit your local DECA or Parks Victoria office. Um, the customer call service number there, the 136186 is actually a DECA one. Um, but if you just mention good neighbor, hopefully it'll come through to me. But has anyone got any questions or I'll just stop scaring my machine and hand it over to Gervais. <laughs> Yeah, um, thank you, Mel. I would um, just got a, a couple of questions here. So one, uh, this one's from Uncle Dozer Atkinson. Um, he's asked, do you mean the traditional owners or the registered, registered Aboriginal parties um, when there's a difference? Um, so this is a really, really new area for us. So we're trying to establish who those people are. So likewise in Gippsland, we've got people um, that are the recognised traditional owners, um, sorry, I get the terminology a little bit back to front. Um, so recognised Aboriginal parties, and then we've got people that are recognised as, I, I'm going to muck up the terminology and I really apologise, but we, we're trying to engage with both. So a really good example is the Snowy Monaro group up on the Can River, and a recognised Aboriginal party, but we recognise that one of the first peoples up there. So we kind of consult with everyone that we can um, through our local sort of level. Um, it's a very new space for us to work in and we're just trying to figure out who, go, who the appropriate people are within all the different regions. And I think that's going to take us a little bit more time to kind of recognise who we should be talking to. Um, already we've got some local connections, but we just don't know who everyone is. So that's something we're working towards over the next 12, 18 months. It's only been this year we've brought in that traditional owner component because we've recognised the importance of it. Um, quite a few of them are actually delivering on-ground works for us where there are areas that are sort of jointly managed parks and things like that. So, um, yeah, moving forward, hopefully we can get the right people to talk to within each of the regions. Very good, thank you. Um, so now Mark's actually asked, and this is probably a bit um, general, but who's uh, the parks coordinator for the North East? Like, would, um, have you got a... So there's actually two, and it's a really interesting line. Um, so Steph Mann is in Bansdale, and she she looks after, so she's got a bit of Bright, a bit of um, Hume region. Um, she's got components of it. I can find out the actual determination. I was going to say, um, perhaps, Mel, if you would like to give, um, give me the contacts, and I will follow up to the group after yeah, yeah. So there are two. There are two. So there's another one on the other side, Bruce Bruce Werner, which looks after part of 
that estate. So it's a really interesting line. Parks Victoria's, they don't follow the same region as we do. So these are, so we've got a Gippsland region, but within that Gippsland region, we've got representation from sort of um, northeast and, and east in, in our technical assessment panel. So yeah, I can definitely give you the information about who the correct contacts are. Oh, that's good. Them on. And, and also, Mark, in terms of the land care facilitator for the Northeast, so there's several land care networks. So, for example, um, with the Wodonga Urban Land Care Network, and we have a couple of facilitators there. There's the Ovens um, and Mid Ovens Land Care Groups, Mitted to Murray, Kiwa Catchment, um, the Gecko Clan. There's, so, there's quite a few. So, what I will also do is actually give you a list of, um, depending where you're located, as to um, what are those contacts for the land care facilitators. So I'll send that out. So to the participants that have joined up, I'll, I'll actually send out um, some information about the, the, the land care networks in the north northwest. Be Beechworth is actually, I think, pretty sure that's the Ovens land care network, but I can I might send out, you know, there's the several different contexts. So that is, um, so that's actually would be Penny um, Rally and uh, Kerry Warburton, but I can give you their contact details. Thank you. So do we have any more questions either um, or anybody wants to ask particularly um, any questions for Mel? So we've got a few th um, to follow up with. So, um, so I think we might just um, thank thank Mel because um, that was a really good coverage. It's a it's a it's a great program, and I think um, it's a really good opportunity to have learned more about what there is out there to to offer. Um, so thank you very much, Mel. Not thank a problem. Thanks. Thank so um, now so um, I'll actually I'd like to now hand it over to Andrew Griffiths. Andrew is the Natural Resource Resources Coordinator from the Wodonga Council, and he's going to outline the importance of determining land tenure, the weeds and pests of concern to Wodonga Council, and how to contact your uh, council and what assistance may be available um, for pest and weed control on council land um, to complement work on your property and to maintain the natural assets as well. Um, Thanks, Andrew. Um, I'll hand it over to you. Uh, thanks very much, Gervais. Um, I'll try and get my screen to share now so I can um, go through that. Uh, just make sure that's working for everybody. Yeah, that's good. Thanks, Andrew. All right, um, thanks again. Um, yeah, just, I'll just, in, again, um, my name's Andrew Griffiths. I'm the uh, team, team leader, updated title, sorry, Gervais. Um, team leader of Parks and Natural Resources for Wodonga Council. Um, I guess why that's relevant for this topic is uh, I run the operational component and the team that is responsible for a weed control across council's um, parks and natural, natural environment. Uh, I'm quickly going to cover off land tenure, prioritising weed control, council programs and how we can support um, works on, on, I guess, adjoining, adjoining properties to council. <clears throat> um, so I guess firstly land tenure, um, quite an important topic. Um, it's very important for us um, because we receive a lot of a lot of inquiries around um, management responsibility. Um, we're often the first point of contact um, for the community, uh, but more often than not, we're actually not the landowners. Um, and why it's important is because we cannot, without consent, uh, do any works on land that's not managed by council. Unfortunately, this often leads the community to feel like we're shirking our responsibility or, or trying to give, give them a runaround, um, which, is, which is an unfortunate circumstance, but we, we certainly will try to point them in the right direction um, and assist this community to, to report their concerns where they need to.
All right. Um, so I guess just to cover off, the main sort of land tenures in Wodonga where we're going to have, um, I guess, issues with, with weed control, you've got your council reserves, your, your parks, in, environmental land and roadside vegetation. Um, there's a lot of crown land also in the Wodonga region. Um, that's managed or owned, sorry, owned by DECA. Um, but it may have a committee of management that's responsible for its management. So um, as I've got there, Parklands, Aubrey Wodonga are the committee of management for much of the Crown land in Wodonga. So they will actually be the ones that will undertake the work and, and who should be, who we should be reporting any uh, weed issues we have concerns to. Uh, look, there's also another, another, there's also a number of other government agencies um, with substantial tracts of land through through the Wodonga municipality. Uh, Vic Roads is a big one, Vic Track, um, Defence and the Water Authorities also have large amounts of land. One of the um, concerns or that often comes to us is how do we know what's council managed roadsides and what's Vic Roads managed roadsides. Uh, it's not defined, but one of the key things to think about is Major highways and arterial roads are generally Vic roads. The remaining are generally council managed roadsides. Uh, the other category that we have there is, is private land. Sorry, I've just lost my mouse, there we go. Um, determining land tenure can be quite tricky. Um, there's not a lot of information available online. Um, MapShare is, is one software run by the state government um, where you can determine what is Crown and what is um, not Crown, I suppose. Um, council, we can also um, share a bit of information. We are governed by privacy rules, so we can't give out personal information, but we certainly can let you know if it's a large, I guess, company, um, or industrial land, we can provide phone numbers of, of main offices um, and, and maybe an address where you can send a letter and, and things like that. So um, yeah, we do realise it is quite tricky to determine the land tenure. Um, Prioritising weed control, um, very important for us. Um, there is a finite resource and infinite weed control demand. Um, it's as simple as that, we can't do it all. Uh, it's really important um, that we get the best bang for our buck uh, and it can often be a very tricky balancing act. Um, there's a number of factors that go into prioritising works for weed control. Um, legislative responsibility is one of our major ones for us as um, Wodonga City Council. The Catchment and Land Protection Act is one of the main ones um, that lists, lists, I guess, declared weeds um, where we have a legal obligation to undertake works. That breaks the weeds down into four categories, state prohibited, regionally prohibited, regionally controlled and restricted weeds. Um, it is also important to note, um, there are terms floating around out there such as um, environmental weeds, et cetera, um, but you have to be really careful with those ones because while it may be a known environmental weed, um, it may not have any legal cl classification for control. Um, a really good example of that one is the Canary Island date palm, um, known environmental weed yet there is no classification for it to be controlled. Uh, and, and we see that around town quite regularly. Um, I think it's even planted in some, some centre medians in locally. Um, again, when we're prioritising weed control, distribution and impact um, is, a, is a really important factor we need to consider. Is it widespread or localised? What is the extent of the infestation? Is it minor or heavy? Um, and what is the impact of the weed? So things we certainly look at will be how invasive it is, um, its agriculture and biodiversity imp impacts and potential competition with native species. Um, will it colonise a whole area? Uh, will it take over habitat? 
certainly certainly try to get that balance right uh, of what we can control with our limited resources. Um, the land context is another important consideration for us. Um, so I guess this relates to the distribution impacts as it will vary depending on the land, um, how it's used and how it's managed. Um, so listed there, I've got the different types of lands that council maintain. Um, and so the dip weeds will vary based, based on those reserves. A, a really good example of that is um, grassy weeds, um, so something like Chilean needlegrass um, or African lovegrass, really less likely to establish in urban parks because they're subject to frequent maintenance and mowing. So um, it doesn't really get a chance to set seed because um, it will be cut off. So while, while it might be present, it's less likely to spread. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is um, with the context is community needs and wants can be vastly different. Uh, what is considered by some as a weed will be loved by others. So um, willows is a, is a great example. We might have every intention of removing willows from all our parks and reserves, but we get a lot of kickback on that because there's a lot of the community that really value those. So it is a bit of a, del a delicate balancing act which leads nicely into my next slide. Um, because our management plans and strategies should help us provide clarity and set expectations of what will be delivered and where. So for example, if we are going to allow non-native species to be planted, we'll be very clear about where that will be. Um, so we're not down the track having to remove them because they're becoming a, a, a weed. Um, Um, so I guess um, there are federal, state and regional um, management strategies and plans um, that we, we look at when we're, when we're programming our local works. Um, our, our local management plans and strategies are, are really the ones where we get a lot of the on ground work happening and specific actions. Some of the ones that um, you might likely have heard of or we refer to regularly will be the Aubrey Wodonga Regional Natural Environment Strategy, uh, the Wodonga Roadside Pest and Weed Management Plan, the Wodonga Regional Waterways Action Plan, the Laniva Valley Barrenduda Native Vegetation Precinct Plan, uh, and then we have a bunch of individual reserve management plans as well for some of our um, environmental reserves. Okay, so I guess um, some of our key programs um, that we do, um, these uh, will differ depending on the land context that I mentioned previously, and will be our roadside pest and weed control plan is one of, is one of our um, big programs. This really has a focus on regionally controlled weeds um, as listed in the Catchment and Land Protection Act. The intent of this program is to support community and community group actions and really prevent spread of existing established weeds and control new and emerging weed outbreaks. Our Waterways Woody Weed Control Program, um, that basically uses the Wodonga Regional Waterway Action Plan as a guiding document for management. It has a large focus on large woody weeds to to protect natural biodiversity and build assets. Uh, our focus with that program at this stage is generally around targeting large seeding trees as a priority. Um, there's no point us doing a lot of sapling control when we're leaving a seed source behind. So um, the large, large woody ones are our main focus. And our council, basically our council environmental estate. Um, we run various control programs throughout the year. Uh, we have a woody weeds program, a grasslands weeds program, uh, broadleaf and herbaceous weed program. As I mentioned before, 
Uh, these, these are very much guided by individual reserve management plans. Um, we do get a lot of community interface on some of those lands and, and a lot of community requests for management. So um, we do really take those into consideration and, and work on those. Um, another part of that environmental reserves is the preventing spread into private land. So um, again, that falls back to the Catchment and Land Protection Act. Our focus is on prevention. Realistically, a lot of that's not prevention because it's so a lot of those are established weeds and we're not, we're not, not resourced enough or, or it's just of a, such a large scope that we won't ever control them completely. Um, so it's largely an exercise of preventing their spread. <clears throat> Oops, sorry, I've gone too, I've gone too quick there. Um, look, so, so across those programs, um, some of our priority weeds, um, as Mal had mentioned, is, is blackberry. That's been a, a really large focus for us, probably over a number of years, um, to really reduce the amount of blackberry along our waterways um, and along our environmental estate and roadsides. Um, Bathurst burr is probably one that we spend a lot of time focusing on right across our environmental estate. Some Barnaby thistle, it's quite a bad one in certain areas along our roadsides, um, particularly around, around the North Barnum. Barnawatha area. Sweet rise is a nasty one we, we try to get on top of. Topped lavender, uh, wild Watsonia, uh, chili needlegrass. Again, that's another one that's quite bad around that North Barnawatha area. Uh, cool Thai grass is one of, uh, one of the probably new and emerging weeds that we're starting to get find around our reserves. Um, it has been present in New South Wales quite some time, but um, up until, until the last couple of years, we hadn't really noticed much of it in Wodonga. Uh, some of our thistle species are, are problematic for us. Um, saffron thistle being partic particularly problematic um, on some of our hilltops where we have a lot of recreation use. Um, with our waterway program, uh, our willow species are our, our, main, our main focus there. Um, really quite a problem. A lot of environmental damage, um, particularly when they take root in streams. Um, the risk to build assets is quite significant. So um, there's a large focus on removing. Uh, Cape Broom uh, and Hawthorne are probably the last two there I'd, I'd mention, um, and they're really um, an issue for us on roadsides. <coughs> um, Pest management is, is an area that we don't do a lot of work on. Um, outside of rabbit control programs, this, this really is a new and emerging area for council. Uh, for us, it's a really difficult space to work in, uh, being very highly regulated on the inner, and, and we are on the interface between an urban and rural area, um, presents a lot of challenges. Uh, shooting is, is, is one of the main controls. Um, and again, being on that interface, rural to urban, um, that presents many, many challenges. Uh, community perception of, of deer is another one that we surprisingly find to be a bit of a challenge. Uh, many like the deer. Um, and and look, ho hopefully with some of the education work that's being done and programs through, through DECA that um, is starting to change and it's starting to be more recognised as a problem species. Uh, goats are quite bad on some of our hilltop reserves and um, we do have some pigs starting to, to enter into say, our, some of our urban hilltop reserves. <coughs> Sorry, I've lost my mouse again. There we go. Um, so council support for, for action or, we can, or works. Uh, look, we exist, sorry, we support um, the community through existing operational programs. Um, we support uh, community groups uh, through labour and organised events. Um, we support through materials. We used to have a grant, grant program. I'm not sure if that might have been recently changed with 
um, the new budget coming in. Um, uh, but we, we really do want to support requests for assistance. Um, individuals looking to seek support through council with pest and weed management concerns. Um, the, best way to, the best way to do that is to contact council's customer serve, sorry, custom, council's customer focus team um, and generate what we call a customer service request. Similar to what Mel said, um, we, want, we want the community to be really clear with what you're seeking, um, whether you're reporting a weed infestation or seeking the support, support for actual weed control. Uh, please know the species, um, be really clear of location and be able to provide accurate, accurate information. We will do every, every attempt to try and support where we can, uh, but we do, so, we do ask, please be prepared to temper expectations. As control programs are really limited in resources available and we have to work towards the seasonal weather windows. So um, a, regular, a regular thing we might get is requests for blackberry control this time of the year. Uh, for us with our limited resources, it's not, it's not good bang for our buck. Plants are starting to shut down. The chances of having a good kill at this time of the year are, are low. So that's something we would tell community, please give us the information you need. We'll use that and we'll program that in for back November, November through to March the following year when, when we're active in that Woody Weed program. Um, uh, and again, I guess the other thing to keep in mind is that can, council can only support works on council managed land. So um, yeah, um, I think that was me done. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, just reporting to um, requests for assistance or, or support. Um, council's customer service requests are, are the best way to do that. Um, telephone customer, council's customer focus team. Um, that's one way. You can also do this online um, via the inquiry form that's on council's main webpage. Um, so if you, if you navigate to the contact page, you'll find a section there where you can put in information and that will be sent through. Um, the other way to do it is via City Watch. So that's a, that's a, it's a separate web application, um, can be found via, I think you can get to it from our webpage, main webpage, or you can, it can be Googled City Watch and that generates the customer request. So once, once that's been generated, um, our customer focus team will allocate that to usually myself um, with all the information and then I'll, I'll respond to that um, program that works with our, in, into our program. The best, the best thing to do if, community are looking to get information on what's going on is to ask to be contacted uh, because then we we are obligated to make a phone call or get in contact and let you know where where your request is up to so um, and that's yeah that's the end of end of that so i might just um pass back to gervais if that's okay thank you andrew um so we, we don't have any questions in the chat. I'm just wondering um, if does anybody else have some questions for Andrew? Um, if so, would you like to just take yourself off mute and um, say a question? Um, and I guess, Andrew, I guess the other part of that, um, you mentioned some of the council strategies. So other councils will have fairly similar strategies for people that are not... Um, within the Bodonga Council area. They just would go into their website or contact them with regards to the similar type of strategies. Would that be right? Yeah, so uh, I think I mentioned the um, roadside pest and weed control, control plan. plan. Um, that's, that's a program run by uh, um, Agricultural Victoria. And I think Deacon might be involved in that as well. Um, and that provides funding to each local municipality to undertake works on rural roadside. So each local government is required to put together a plan um, of, of the weeds they're targeting. And that's probably one of the key ones to support the community um, because it does ask for, for the local government 
to seek community feedback. Very good. Um, have we got any other questions for Andrew yeah. or even for Mel, if you've thought of anything else? Um, so Lizette said, thank you very much. Interesting overview. So um, if not, um, I think I'll probably wrap it up for tonight. Uh, I'll send you the resources. I've got everybody's email addresses. So I'll send resources that Mel and, um, and, and, and Andrew have provided some of the, as well as the, the link to this recording um, and some of the follow-ups that we said that we'd provide as well. So uh, I'll, I'll forward those out. I'll also send um, you a short uh, evaluation for this webinar because that provides us with feedback of how we can improve um, what we have to offer. And um, so finally, I'd just like to thank Mel and Andrew for a really informative presentation. Thank you for um, joining us and giving up your time tonight. And also thanks everybody else for joining us and giving up their time. I hope that you've actually gained um, some very useful knowledge out of um, the webinar tonight. So um, thanks, everyone, and um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night.